Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, the abridged verse, chapter 18. The Monstrous Revenge Night had begun to fall when we arrived at our inn. We took a short walk around Elion and ate our first meal as a family in our room. We were to travel to Italy first thing the next morning. Suddenly, a rainstorm started. The water hit the windows with such power that we were both a bit frightened. As soon as it became dark, my calm, happy mood disappeared. After Elizabeth went to bed, a thousand fears rose in my mind. I was nervous and watchful. Every sound terrified me, but I didn't move. I stood guard with all of the strength that I could muster. I walked up and down the hallways of the inn, searching for the monster. I looked in every corner. In every open room, and there was no sign of him. For a moment, I thought everything was going to be okay. Then I heard her scream. I raced up the stairs and into our room. Elizabeth lay there on our bed. Oh, the monster had his revenge. My dear, sweet Elizabeth, who had never heard a soul in her life, was gone. The monster had kept his word and given me a life like his own. I was doomed to spend the rest of my day miserable and alone, just like the horrible creature I had created. I rushed to an open window to see if I could catch him. The air was cold and the rain blew inside the room. I saw the monster standing on the ground outside the window. Stop! I shouted. You villain! You killed my wife! My shouting brought a crowd of people into my room. That man just murdered my wife, I yelled. Quickly, we must try to catch him. The men raced outside with me while the woman stayed behind to tend to Elizabeth's body. We tried to follow the monster's tracks, but it was no use. We couldn't find him. It was all too much for me, and I fainted. The kind townspeople brought him back, brought me back to the room and put me to bed, but I could not rest. Not when he was still out there. Not after he had ruined my only chance at happiness. I threw out the sheets and went into the next room to take a last look at my one true love. Oh, dear Elizabeth, I cried. I am so sorry. I loved you so much, my darling. I took her in my arms and kissed her goodbye. The innkeeper and his wife were very kind to me. They said they would make sure Elizabeth had arrived back home safely. I wrote my father a quick letter. I told him that I was going to find the man who caused all our heartache. I rushed out into the night to find the monster. I didn't know where he went or where he was going, but that didn't matter. The only thing that mattered was finding him. I knew I would never go home again. This thought made me very sad, and I knew my father would be very unhappy, too. 
but I didn't want to cause him any more pain. He and Ernest would find it hard enough to go on after the death of Elizabeth. The only honor in my actions would be to finish what I had started. I raced out of the inn. I could hear an echo far off in the distance. It was coming from the lake itself. It was a loud and evil laugh. That's him, I cried. He is on the lake. I jumped into a boat and started to row with all of my strength. Thus, the long journey began. I've chased him for many months now, from the shores of Switzerland to the cold, icy fields of Russia. He ran, and I ran after him. My life was miserable. There were no comforts of home. No friends to cheer me up and no family to love. But I knew I would not find peace until I found and destroyed him. When I reached St. Petersburg, the monster had left me a note. You are still alive, Frankenstein, but I know you are unhappy. Follow me now to the icy kingdom of the Arctic. You will feel the misery of the cold and the frost. If you want to catch me, you must do as I say. I would never give up the search. I started off for the Arctic in my sled. The dogs drove north. The cold was almost too much to bear. He left me clues along the way, short notes that I was going in the right direction. The colder it got, the harder I pushed. The only thing driving me forward was the thought of finally meeting the monster and ending everything for good. The dogs were very fast. They allowed me to catch up to him as I had never been able to before. I came to a small village and asked the people there if they had seen anything. One man told me that he had seen a terribly ugly man drive through on his own sled hours before I had arrived. The monster had stolen some food and taken off after scaring much of the people in town. To the horror of these men and women, I took off in the direction of no man's land. No man can survive that there, he said to me. He will either... He will either be frozen to death or be stuck on the icy floes. Either way, he will never be seen again. I thanked him for his information and then bought some supplies for the long journey ahead. The land thundered underneath me. The ice cracked and water leaked through. The cold bit at my nose, my ears, my fingers, and my toes. But I didn't stop. And then at last I saw him. It was just a mile in front of me, so I pressed on. The wind rose and the seas roared. With a mighty shock like an earthquake, the ice split wide open. I was struck on a piece of the floe. All hope of ever catching the monster was gone, and I floated out to sea. I would certainly not survive the night, trapped on one small piece of ice. Hour by hour after hour went by. The ice slowly melted underneath me. I almost gave up all my hope. My life would end in this frozen barren land. I would be unable to finish what I had started.